I've titled today's message, You Can Possess What You Confess. How many of you believe that? Amen. You can possess what you confess. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Say to them, as Ali says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Proverbs 10, 11. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Words are powerful and consequential. They are the divine tools used by godly and wise people to create their realities. You have to be careful about the things you say because the things you say can shape your destiny. The things you say can define who you are. When there was a deep darkness upon the face of the earth, God was not moved by the darkness. He did not even confess the darkness. The reason some of you are going through crisis is because you're confessing all the negative things around you. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Words are powerful and words are consequential. Now someone is going to ask me, what do you say when you are going through crisis? You don't confess the darkness. You don't encourage the darkness. You don't curse the darkness. You simply speak for the light. If you have crisis in your life, don't confess the crisis. God has called you to be the lords of the earth. And so the, the entire creation responds to the things you say. The Bible says life and death lies in the power of the tongue. That means if you're going through crisis, the Bible says let the weak say I am strong. Now, God is not telling us to lie. He's telling us to confess what we believe. What do you believe? Because if you can confess all the things you're looking for, you will have them. All the wonders you're looking for lies in you. If you want to become great, then you need to start confessing greatness. You can't become great by confessing things that aren't great. You need to confess greatness. Confess your convictions. Don't confess your fears. Some people say, I'm afraid. Yes, it's okay. Sometimes people get afraid, but your fear should not define you. You are born of God and born of the Spirit and born of His essence. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, you will overcome your crisis. You will overcome your pain. You will overcome all everything that is contrary to the Word of God in the name of Jesus. If you are going through crisis right now, I stand on the authority of God's word and I declare that you're coming out of the crisis you're coming out of the pain you're coming out of everything that is contrary to the will of God and whatever God has not planted in your life I declare that it is falling right now in the mighty name of Jesus Proverbs 18 20 to 21 a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth from the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. That means your satisfaction comes from the fact that you have the capacity and the ability to produce what you want. That means you can produce what you want. Now, this is why God is different. God can create things. We were born in his essence. We were created in his image. God creates things not with tools. He creates things not with bulldozers. He creates things with his words. Your words are powerful. Whatever you want your children to be, keep speaking, they will become. When God took man and gave him the power of dominion, dominion simply means having authority over everything. There's something about the kingdom. The kingdom comes with principles. Do you want to dominate your situation or you want your situations to dominate you? Do you want to dominate your assignment or you want your assignment to dominate you? The concept of dominion means speaking intentional spoken words, the authority to produce life. The death you see around you comes from the fact that you confessing the wrong things. The reason you are not satisfied from this scripture we've just read, a man's stomach shall be full. But you have to produce. You have to speak the right things. You can't have the headache and say, Patina. You can't have any little thing and you say, Kanza. You are the one giving that thing name. Name your circumstances. Even if you don't feel rich, say, I'm rich. Even if you don't feel well, say, I'm, I'm strong. 
That's why the Bible says, I can do all things. Not some things. True Christ who strengthens us. There is a power that works in you. It is a power of God unto creation. There is a power of God that works in you. Some of you, you keep confessing. If you think that by staying and say lonely and this and posting all those nasty things on Facebook, that's not the path to greatness. You must say, I know who I am. I'm born of God. I'm born of his spirit. I am born of his essence. The greater one lives in me. When there was a deep darkness upon the face of the earth, God spoke. He didn't speak the darkness. He said, let there be light. Another translation says, light be. What do you want to be in your life? Speak it. Keep speaking it. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12 verse 37. For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. The condemnation does not come from external sources. It comes from within. If you feel cheap, it's because you think cheap and you confess cheap things. Women, it's so easy to say, you made me like this. My husband made me like this. That's not true. A woman who thinks cheap will act cheap and will confess cheap things. You must know your worth. Everything you want to be is in you. The question is, do you believe? A man who thinks he's a king can never be made to behave like a slave. What do you think about yourself? It's so easy to do the blame game and say, I I'm like this because, uh, because uh, this, 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 this one did this to me. That's not true. Joseph knew who he was. And at every point in time, he confessed who he was. He became who he was. Whatever words they've spoken concerning you, I speak today as the father of team, and I declare that you are who God says you are in the name of Jesus. You are productive. You are blessed. You are honored. You are glorified. You are sanctified. You are loved. You are victorious. You believe that shout hallelujah. Proverbs 12, 13. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. You see, wicked people are even ensnared by the transgression of their mouth. They say things, and these things begin to haunt them and destroy them. When God called the prophet, he took him to the dry bones. He told the prophet, can these bones leave? He was asking the prophet the question, and the prophet knew that only God can make anything leave. He said, only you know. Then God told him. He didn't say, sympathize with the dry bones. He didn't say, gossip about the dry bones. He said, prophesy. Every one of you can prophesy. The word of God is a prophecy. The Bible says the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ is prophecy. I declare that from this moment you will prophesy into your own situation in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say we make our own prophecy in Christ. The Bible, the word of God, the Holy Scripture is one book of prophecy. That means if you're looking for a prophecy... Get one of the scriptures, make it personal, and prophesy, and keep prophesying, and you will become whatever you prophesy. I prophesy into your destiny. 
before this year ends, all your dreams shall be established in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into your destiny that none of you will die before your time in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into your destiny that you will move from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into your destiny that your hands, your hands will begin to be productive in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into your destiny that no sickness shall cling to your body in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into your destiny that by the stripes of Jesus you'll be made whole. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Words magnify what we believe and reveal the state of our hearts. They amplify our convictions. What do you believe? Luke chapter 6 verse 45 tells me a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. You can speak the wrong words and say joke lang. There's no joke in the spirit realm. The Bible says, be careful about what you speak. For every word you speak will be used as a testimony against you. And for people who say things carelessly, be careful. You know, marriages are in shambles because anytime there is a disagreement, I quit. Let's split. That's why you have so many divorces and troubles. Don't confess your weakness. Confess your strength. When people come into our lives, they add values to our lives or they subtract values from us. Don't spend time with people who are always fearful in their convictions because their words can corrupt your faith. If they don't want to confess good things, drop them. Say, excuse me. Get off my sight. Because your destiny is like a software. Whatever you feed into that software, it becomes. If you want to feed junk into your software, excuse me, you get off my space. You have to confess what you believe. Even if the truth is staring at you and the truth is negative, don't confess it. When the Shunammite woman lost her son, she didn't say my son was dead. Is it well? She said, it is well. And her son came back to life. I declare that every confession you have made that is negative today by the power of override, I overrule it in the name of Jesus. You shall not die but live to declare the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. You must always speak what you believe. Say, I believe. I believe. How many of you believe that you are going to be great men and women in this place? Yeah. How many of you believe that you are going to overcome all your crises? Yeah. How many of you believe that you will not die before your time? Say, I believe. I believe. So never confess what you do not believe. If you want victory, keep confessing victory. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, what do you say to your challenges? Well, I'm Para. Well, I'm Buhai. But I that's not how you talk to the mountain because the mountain has no feelings. You cannot be confessing the wrong things and expect to have life. Confess what you believe. What is your mountain? Your mountain may be your husband, it may be your wife, may be the people around you. Don't say you useless husband. The more you tell him he's useless, the more useless he becomes. Tell your husband, say, you blessed husband. Amen. You know, some of you call your, your house help, you call your children, you call them gagu. That's not the right thing. They are going to do stupid things. Even if you feel that way, lay hands on them. Say you are so wise. 
You are so poggy. You are so guapa. Diva, you call what you believe. Are you surprised? You call your child stupid, useless. They grow up. And you're saying, why are you so useless? No, you program them to be useless. When I was growing up, my parents, everything they wanted me to be, they called me. And I became. So when I had my kids, I took it to the next level. I have never, I repeat, never said anything negative about my children. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. It is never too late. Go home and bless your husband, even if he doesn't look like Abraham. <laughs> Go home and bless your wife, even if she doesn't talk like Sarah. Hallelujah. Words are powerful. They will manifest what you want them to be. Hallelujah. I know what I'm seeing is not what I really want now, but I know you are going to be Abraham of this generation. Hallelujah. I know that you don't wash your socks very well, and your socks bring some very bad smell to the house, but I know you are going to be very great in the name of Jesus. I know sometimes you have a problem brushing your teeth when you smile. It's not exactly what I want, but I know that you are going to be the next poster boy for the best industry in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep confessing what you believe. Women, you say you don't have husbands. No. You can call your husbands from afar. Get a picture of the type of man you want. Say, this is what I want. I call him forth. They are going to manifest. Hallelujah. We all have mountains, but we don't confess defeat before the mountains. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24, For as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. How many of you desire a house? Amen. Say, I receive it. How many of you desire a good salary? Say, I receive it. How many of you desire to do great things? Say, I receive it. Let me tell you what you are going to do. Anything you want to be. Get the scripture. Amplify it and confess it every day. Do it for the next six months and you'll see the changes that will take place in your life. Positive confession is the key to abundant possession and a victorious living. Prayerful people motivated by faith use their words prudently because they understand the power of words. The brethren of David saw Goliath. What did they do? Some confessed that we cannot defeat him. Some ran away. But this is what David did. When you stand before your Goliath, how do you behave? What do you say? 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 48. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day... I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the earth and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So it was when the Philistines arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine, and he destroyed Goliath. Faith does not draw back. Faith looks forward to the fight. If you are reluctant to fight the fight of faith, then it's not faith. The fight of faith does not take into account the size of the enemy. 
For others, they saw Goliath, an enemy too big to conquer. But David saw an opportunity too big to miss. What was David's conviction? The God that saved me from the lion and from the bear. We also save me from your hands. God saved you from sickness. God saved you in the past. God saved you 10 months ago. God saved you 10 years ago. And yet you're still afraid. Where is your faith? Think of God's goodness. When you were down, he took you out. You went through the fire, he delivered you. You went through the water, he delivered you. My God, we deliver you from this present crisis in the mighty name of Jesus. He will never leave nor forsake you. He will take you out of your crisis take you out of your pain take you out of whatever is against you because he favors you because he loves you because you are the apple of God's eyes I declare in the name of Jesus that you are coming out of your present crisis in the name of Jesus you will be victorious over sickness you will be victorious over crisis you will be victorious over your pain tell your neighbor say I am victorious and you are coming out if you believe that shout hallelujah Never confess your fears when you are confronted with deadly challenges. Always boldly declare victory over the crisis. Faith is the key to overcoming adversity. Exodus 14, 12 to 14. Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Tell your neighbors, hey, stand still. So why is it that people of faith do not experience victory sometimes. It is simple. It is not because God cannot save. It's because you complain too much. You nullify the miracles of God. God does not save people from Egypt only to allow them to perish in the wilderness. If that happens, it's because you have allowed the slave mindset. There are two kinds of mindset. The mindset of a son... And the mindset of a slave. Are you a son or a slave? Because a son does not complain. A son looks at what the father can give to him. But a slave is always pointing fingers. Why didn't you allow us to stay in Egypt? It would have been better for us. Let me make something clear. Never give promotion to those people who are not equipped to handle the promotion. Because they'll mess up the whole thing. Why did God allow the people of Israel to pass through the wilderness? A journey that would have lasted 40 days took them 40 years. Why? Two reasons. The wilderness is a place of testing. God will never give you anything he has not prepared you for. He will test you. He will prune you. God tests people, but he does not tempt them. Satan tempts, but God tests. If you want this, God is going to test you. He allowed them to go through the wilderness so that he can know the intents of their hearts. He said, I called you to be a nation of kings. And priest, I want to give you a land to rule. But the people that he delivered failed the test because they never saw beyond Egypt. The problem you have, the reason you are not stepping into your destiny, despite all your gift, is because you are still holding on to the past. You confess yesterday when you should be confessing tomorrow. You are still confessing yesterday. You know, Bishop, they, they cheated me. Move on. Tell your neighbor, you've been saying this for 10 years. Come on, I don't want to hear it again. Move on. You've become a drama queen. 
Anytime you sit down, you blink, you start crying, you tell the same story. Come on, tell us something you for God's sake. Move on. I'd rather hear you say, look at what God has done. All I hear you say, you know, uh, the bishop did this to me, you know, my, my ex did this to me. Come on. That's not a strategy for victory. Confess what you know. Confess what you hold dear as conviction. The reason your marriage is still where you are, you keep saying the same thing. Ten years ago you said it, you're still saying it. Give yourself a new story. You become the pen in which God can write your story of victory. How many of you will make a commitment that as from this moment, I'm not going to talk about my past again. <laughs> you know, the reason sometimes God ignores you, he said, the things you did in the past, I remember no more. And so when you say, God, you remember that guy, that guy that I slept with, that God is saying, hmm? What are you talking about? You, you know, God, you, you remember that time I robbed the bank? I, what? Uh, you, you, you know, God, you, you, the problem is not even Satan. You are your own problem. So what? You lied in the past. So what? You cheated in the past. So what? You committed adultery in the past. So what? Is that going to be your story? Confess who you are in Christ. Say, I'm righteous. I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. Maybe you've been doing bad things and you meet one of your past lovers. You say, hi, sweetie. Hi, sexy. You say, excuse me. Are you not sexy, Joy? Nope. This is Joy the righteous. Sorry. But, but, but did we not do something in 2005? No. Get behind me, I know you not. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away and everything has become new. Move on. It takes only a devil to talk about your past. Because Satan is an accuser. Don't apologize for what God has forgiven you for. Don't let anyone hold you in hostage. I know what you did last summer. If the devil reminds you of your past, look at him and say, you know, that was my past. But let me remind you of your future. You are going to hell. You and all your demons, you are going to hell. Your future is safe. It's heaven. Say, I'm heaven bound. But say, not now. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what you confess. Numbers 14, 8 to 9. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Say, I am favored. You know, in the Old Testament, nobody could tell the mind of God because we were afraid. Right? That's why they said, if the Lord delights in us. Under grace and under the New Testament, we, we are not doing guesswork. We know. In the Old Testament, when you go to the presence of God, you are like this. Because you don't know whether God is going to kill you or God is going to. But now the Bible says, let us go boldly. Say, go boldly. Say, go boldly. Into the throne room of God that we may obtain mercy. You are not going to ask for it because you have been given. You are going to claim what has been freely given. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Is God going to forgive me? No. God has forgiven you. You just go and say, God, I claim my health. I claim my forgiveness. I claim my greatness. I claim it all by faith. 
Some of you, you talk foolishly. If it's the will of God, let, which will? Are you that ignorant? What is God's will? That none should perish. Only lazy people talk that way. It is not God's will that you are sick. It is not God's will that you are broke. It is not God's will that many are dying prematurely. The will of God is that you prosper in all things, even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Hallelujah. If you check Mark chapter 4, verse 38 to 40, they were going through turbulence, but Jesus was asleep. Having done all, stand. Some of you, when you come to the end of the month, you can't sleep. You can sleep through crisis. You can sleep through turbulence. And while Jesus was sleeping, some of them said, don't you care if we perish? Jesus woke up and he said, oh man of little faith. Write this down. If you are going through crisis and God cannot stop the turbulence immediately, it is because God wants to take you to safety. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid. All you need to do is to speak through the storm. Say, the Lord rebuke you. Use your words intentionally to build and not to destroy destinies. Verbal indiscipline can expose you to sin and mistakes. If you have nothing positive to say, keep quiet. Proverbs 10, 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Say, be wise. James 1, 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Proverbs 17, 27. He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Be calm. Understanding will make you calm. Deliberate exposure to negative words can weaken your faith and expose you to defeat. 1 Samuel 17, 10 to 11. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. What is the devil speaking into your mind? God is not going to stop the devil from speaking. He can speak through your mind. But the Bible says we have to learn how to cast down every imagination and every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of God's word. Confess what you believe and you see it come to pass. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Therefore take heed how you hear. For whoever has to him more will be given. And whoever does not have even what he seems to have will be taken from him. So be careful about the things you accommodate. Because even the small faith you have developed by taking the wrong things. The wrong things can vacuum your faith from you. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how do you build your faith? Keep hearing positive things. Okay, you can do the flip-flop. So poverty comes by hearing the words of Walam Pera. Sadness comes by, you know... In the Philippines, you love all those sad movies and the mistress was thrown out of home. You cry. Come on, stop wasting your tears. Hallelujah. Expose yourself to things that build your faith. Hallelujah. 
Well spoken at the right time with the right spirit and motive, we bring a tremendous harvest to people who understand the purpose. Proverbs 25 verse 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Genesis 50 verse 21, now therefore do not be afraid, I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Job 4.4 4, Your words have upheld him who was stumbling. And you have strengthened the feeble knees. So when you speak the word of God, it gives you strength. John chapter 6 verse 63 It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Lift up your hands. I declare that from this moment you are going to walk in wisdom. Receive the spirit of grace. Receive wisdom. Receive life. Receive promotion. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. When you pray in the spirit and you carry the spirit of God, every word you speak will ignite fire in the hearts of people. Luke chapter 24 verse 32. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn? within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us. Men of God, when you minister, make sure that you minister the fire of God's word. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his words was in my heart like a burning fire shot up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back and I could not. When you carry the spirit of God, it is impossible for you to be silent over evil. When you carry the spirit of God, it is impossible for you to be silent over poverty. The Bible says, for the spirit of the sovereign Lord God is upon me. For God has anointed me to preach the glad tidings. We can't be silent in an atmosphere of sin. We can't be silent in an atmosphere of failure. We keep speaking until something happens. We keep speaking until the society is transformed. Don't stop speaking until righteousness flows like an ever flowing stream. I won't stop speaking until righteousness flows from the north to the east, west, and south. I will not stop speaking until the word of God becomes like fire in Mindana, Luzon and Visayas. I will not stop speaking until Africa, Asia, Australia, America, Europe, and all the parts of the earth are set free. I declare by the spirit of God that God will cause his word to be like fire in your bones. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Leaders with great spiritual authority and power should be compassionate and disciplined with words. With great power comes great responsibility. Leaders, I appeal to you, men and women of authority, be careful about what you say. Second Kings 2, 23 to 24. This was Elisha. Now, he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up by the road, some young boys came out from the city and ridiculed him. And said to him, go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. When he looked behind him and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of the woods and tore up 42 of the boys. Do you want to use your power that way? Hmm? Just because they called you bald head? That is not enough for you to destroy 42 lives. Imagine if he had just rebuked those 42 boys, punished them by saying you will join the school of the prophets, would have had 42 ministers of the gospel. Hallelujah. But Eliamas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, 
and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a darkness fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Sometimes if some bad people want to challenge authority, use the authority to punish them. Paul punished intently, but he still made provision for repentance. He didn't say permanently, he said for a time. I believe when the time was over, the guy may have repented and turned over to God. Hallelujah. It is only when people try to withstand the gospel and Remove people from the faith that you can punish them with your spiritual authority. Hallelujah. When it concerns the gospel and the destinies of nation, fight. First Kings 17.1 And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. That is the fair use of spiritual authority. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers? The messengers of God carry the spiritual authority of God. When they speak, the words come to pass. Matthew 12 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak. They'll give account of it in the day of judgment. In conclusion, believing, declaring, and consciously acting on God's word about your destiny is the best form of positive confession. It creates a clear path to victory in every spectrum of life. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When God sends his word, his word never comes back void. You know, your friends can give you check, and the check can bounce. But the word of God is a reliable check. It never bounces until you cash in the blessing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Declaring the end from the beginning. Say, God declares the end from the beginning. What do you think prophecy is? You are in this battle... You have seen how turbulent the beginning is, but God has already shown you the end. He said, don't worry. You're going to pass through this thing, but you will come out victorious. Now stand to your feet as I declare God's blessings into your life. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Everything God has written concerning you, he said, it shall stand. And God says, I will do all. Say lahat. So don't you ever die without fulfilling all. If God has promised you a house, and you feel sick, don't confess that because you will not die until God gives you the house. We don't die frustrated. We die finished. You cannot die until you say, it is finished. My forefathers all died finished. You cannot die without fulfilling your purpose. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Lift up those hands. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you and I repent from all the negative words I have spoken concerning myself, concerning my loved ones, and concerning my situation. Today, by your mercy and by grace and by the blood of Jesus, I erase every wrong confession. In the name of Jesus, I will not fail. I will not die, but live to declare the glory of God. I will not fail. I am righteous. I am holy. I am born of God. I am victorious. I am wise. I will overcome. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to speak those things concerning your life. Speak them. Confess them. Speak them. Confess them. Speak them. Call it forth in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak it forth right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up those hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand concerning your sons and daughters and I speak into their destinies right now in the name of Jesus. Every wrong confession they've made concerning their spouses, concerning their children, concerning their businesses, concerning their destinies. In the name of Jesus, I revoke it in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that that which was written concerning them in the volume of books let it find expression in the mighty name of Jesus I bless you and I declare that you and your descendants are blessed the work of your hands are blessed your businesses are blessed in the name of Jesus I declare that none of you will die before your time you will go from glory to glory from strength to strength from power to power in the name of Jesus I declare that one of you shall chase a thousand and two of you shall chase ten thousand in the name of Jesus that you step into the promise of God, precept upon precept, line upon line, chapter upon chapter in the name of Jesus. I speak to doors that were shut against you. Ye gates be lifted up. Ye everlasting doors be opened for these ones. Carry the King of glory in the name of Jesus. I declare that you shall do great wonders. That the Spirit of God will dwell upon you. Receive the Spirit of wisdom. Receive the Spirit of revelation. Receive the Spirit of knowledge. Receive the Spirit of power. In the name of Jesus, let goodness and mercy follow you. Let favor follow you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, I declare that as soon as they hear of you, foreigners shall bow before you. Doors shall be opened before you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will stand before kings. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you will walk in righteousness, walk in wisdom, walk in dignity. Arise and shine for the glory glory of God is risen upon you. If you know you are victorious, you know you are powerful, you know you are born of God's spirit, shout hallelujah. God bless you.